and we are here we are on Nino's Corner TV. I have David Weiss. Am I saying your last name correctly? Weiss like ice. Weiss like ice. All right. So I got him on and I'm not fully convinced <laughs> of the flat earth. But look, I've never been to space. I don't know. And, and you know, I know a lot of the NASA shit is CGI. I don't believe anything. And let me just tell you from the get go. I believe we've been indoctrinated at schools. It's all a lie. We don't really know what our reality is. I don't. I don't claim to know. Uh, I was raised thinking that we live on a spinning ball going, what, how many thousands of miles an hour in space, hurtling through space? I don't know. I mean, yeah, it can make sense, but, I mean, I'm not claiming to know anything about this. And I do believe, number one, the one thing you I, you got going for you on this show is that I know our reality has been given to us. It's all a lie. Um, I've never trusted <laughs> I never trust anybody, any of my teachers in school. <laughs> I've never trust the government. So you got that on your side, Dave. Convince so, me. You're going to convince me today. Well, I want to point at some things and point at some doors that you didn't know were there. About teachers, I don't believe teachers are bad people. I believe no, they're, they're not. the ones. No, but I'm just saying they're just delivering the information they're given. They're the ones that memorize and regurgitate the information the best, right. and they become the teachers. So do I know exactly what this world is? There's, There's constructs of the flat earth that I can't even wrap my mind around, right? It, it's incredible. But what we can prove, it's not this. This is insane. But, okay, can I ask you something about that? Isn't there like some kind of a, what is it? Like, have you ever heard of like Al Bielik or uh, the Montauk Project or any of that when they tried, when they went through hyperspace and the ship would disappear and came back on the Philadelphia experiment? But what about that, man? I mean, they're, they're saying that, all right. <laughs> oh, I love all these special effects, man. I need to get good at this shit. Cool story, bro. <laughs> all right. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Um, so, so things like that, Dave, maybe there are parts of truth to that. You know, you know, things about. But there could be other dimensions. There, there, oh, there's, I think okay. there's definitely other dimensions, but let's talk about things that we can prove, you know, things right here on the earth. Um, okay. We cannot have high pressure next to low pressure or no pressure or vacuum, whatever you want to call it, without a physical barrier, right? They tell us space is an ultimate vacuum, right? Some people don't like that word vacuum. So space is the lack of pressure. Well, all the air should go right out into space. It should, but it doesn't. So that's just an impossibility. And, and there's thousands of tests that you can do uh, showing that, you know, you have a, a a box that's a vacuum and you open up a valve, it's going to suck all the air right up into it. No matter what altitude you're at, no matter, you know, which way it's facing, it's going to equalize instantly, right? So why right. doesn't all the air get sucked off of Earth? So I heard you say earlier that um you had somebody said they went to 40,000 feet and the sky yeah. is flat. Well, that doesn't yeah. prove the Earth is round. 40,000 feet. He's no, he said he saw the sphere. He said he saw okay. the sphere. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Listen, this isn't me saying it. No, no, no. I got you. And, and <laughs> I thought I saw the me. sphere too. When <laughs> I first heard about flat earth, I got an airplane and I'm like, oh, I could see the curve. This is ridiculous. Okay. But this is at 120,000 feet looking kind of flat. But you know what? I can kind of see a little curve here. But look at the sun. It kind of looks pretty local. It looks like it's just lighting yeah. up this area here. If it was... 93 million miles away, it would light up everything equally. But why do we see a sphere? Well, one, I've never seen an airplane with perfectly flat glass. The glass is always curved. True. So you look through curve, just a little curve can make you think sphere, but it's worse than that. Or it's easier than that. So the way our eyes work, let's say you're on a, on a deserted island, the, the ocean's perfectly calm, the weather is perfectly clear in all directions. Maybe you've got some spotted clouds up there just to give you a little contrast. At like 30 or 40 miles away, the clouds will merge with the horizon just due to perspective. So that is the limit of your vision. If you had some binoculars or a super zoom camera, you could open that up by making it bigger and then you could see farther and then that closes out. So that point of convergence is the limit of our vision. You agree our limit has a vision you know, due to the angular resolution limits of our eyes. So if I'm okay. standing right here and I'm looking forward at 12 o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, I could see the same distance in all directions. So I'll lay that down and this is me standing and this is the limit of my vision. Well, if you go and draw a line across that, there's a curve. 
That doesn't mean it's a sphere. It's just the limit of our vision. You draw a straight line. Well, our vision, we see in a circle. Our programming tells us it's a ball. Okay. So what, so let me, you have a picture of the moon right there in the sun. So, but they're round. Well, are they? What, so, what are they? Yeah, well, that, that, the moon is the biggest mystery of all. If anyone says that they know what anything we see in the sky is other than airplanes, um, they're lying. They're, they're assuming they're, they're making conclusions based on nothing because we don't know how far they are. We don't know how big they are. Um, we don't know anything. But even if everything in the sky, the planets, you know, the things that we call planets, the moon, the sun were spheres, does that mean that the floor is a sphere? Look at the lights in your ceiling and tell me what shape your floor is. True, but also on the moon, when I look at it with a telescope, I can see the craters. I can see something was hitting it. Meteors you see must something have that we're calling craters, right? But if the moon was being hit by things, don't you think they'd come in at an angle sometimes and leave gouges? All of the things that we're calling craters are circles. There's none that coming in at an angle. So they'd all have to hit at 90 degrees. You got your you got your moon and everything would have to come in at 90 degrees, no matter where they're yeah. coming from. Yeah. So, yeah. so let's look at the moon. I'm going to show you four moons and tell okay, me I which, if, if you, you've seen this, no, no, go is ahead. that a sphere? Yeah. Well, it looked like a sphere. It's a half a sphere. Is this one a sphere? I guess you're going to do the same thing with that one. Is that a sphere? Looks like it to me. It looks like a sphere. I'll give it to you, but it's flat, Dave. Okay. How about this one? Is this one the sphere? As from what I can see, yes. It looks, but it's not. It's a cup. So oh, saying wow. we know what shape oh, the moon is, is, is a lot of assuming. Damn, you got me. Let me see the I'm, other one. What's the other one? Uh, oh, that God. one's a sphere. Yeah, that's so a sphere. Yeah. even if they are spheres, what are they? And, and also go out when the moon is full or near full um, during, no, dur well, when the moon is in the day sky, a full moon during the day sky, by the way, is impossible, but it happens. So the... When you look at the moon, you'll see that it's within our atmosphere, that there's blue sky beyond it, you know? And the same thing at night when Explain there's- Explain that, there's, there's blue sky beyond it. When you look up at the sky, when you look up, clear your head of all the indoctrination okay. and look up at the sky, look up at the moon, and you'll see that it's right here within the Earth's system. Um, you know, it's hard to tell from a picture. Yeah, but I've seen it like that, absolutely, but- so you see the little craters at the end there? Yeah, so, but notice how they're blue here and they're kind of black here. You know, right, like maybe right. the thing that we're seeing is translucent in some way. I don't know. The moon is the biggest mystery. We can't reach the moon. So, you know, Dave, you're- I mean, I, I, I'm with you on the, the one thing you got going for me on this is that for you on this with me is I do not believe we went to the moon. Absolutely oh, come on. Not. We went in. There was two guys and a car in this thing. Come on. <laughs> come on, Dave. I know. And look how much it took. And where did and so the space? And here's a question I have for you. So the space shuttle lifts off from Earth, goes to the moon, and what lands there? Or do they go? Was it just orbiting the moon? Oh, uh, no. So, it, so, down? Yeah. So, so I, mean, um, I didn't see it lift off from the moon in that. No, 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 no. That that never went to the moon. So the. No, the I, I know, but I'm just saying, wouldn't it also have to do that, what we're seeing right there, to go back? Or was it just supposedly orbiting the moon and then that little car flew out and then so two two things are connected they're orbiting the moon this one disconnects lands on the moon uh. lets out the car they go play some golf and then then it takes off and comes back up this is it coming back up to meet with the lunar orbiter there's one so guy they the orbiter. that off the okay this took off off the moon and came up uh. and, and if you watch the video of this thing taking off it, it's it's the dumbest thing ever I mean, yeah, I have seen. Well, I don't think I've seen that, but I'll tell you this much. I hardly get Wi-Fi when I'm driving from Santa Fe in the mountains to Redosa, New Mexico. I hardly get any Wi-Fi. You can't tell me that they were airing this shit on on television in the 1960s on basic cable. I just I don't buy it. I don't well, think so. I don't go for it. I mean, President Nixon called from a landline phone and talked to them without yeah. any delay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay it's, you got that going for you it's the dumbest thing ever felix Baumgarten, or if i'm pronouncing his name right the red bull jump guy you know i saw the curve now was he lying or did he think he saw the curve because he's wearing a curved glass helmet um and he expected to see the curve i can't decide i, I don't know because i think the whole thing was is that done. an actual picture this is one of the pictures this is what globers used to use 
It looks a little, it looks too curved. <laughs> it, well, it is because there was, there was several, um, uh, there was two times they did two test jumps before the televised one, and the test jump, all the horizons were flat. And then they changed everything to GoPro cameras with fisheye lenses. Too curved, Dave. We looked at all these features on the ground, these rivers and everything. This is all New Mexico. All of this. What? All of this is New Mexico. Wow. All of that's New Mexico. So it's a fisheye lens just bending it. And here's the thing. The reason I brought this up is Mission Control was losing contact with him when he was getting close to this height, 127,000 feet. They couldn't communicate with him at 127,000 feet. No problem talking to the guys in the moon 238,000 miles right. away. Right. Okay? So they were losing communications at 127,000 feet. Yeah, and they had how, how, supposedly how far is the moon? 300,000 238,000 miles? miles away. Yes, I just yeah, I, 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 I don't buy that. I, I definitely do not believe in the moon landing. So, so the Earth is rotating. That's not the Earth. That's the Moon. The Earth is rotating um, to the east. That's why. That's why we they they tell us that the Earth is rotating to the east. So you have your sun, and because it's rotating, it looks like the sun is rising, right? So it's rotating to the east. He went up, was up there for like three and a half hours. The Earth is rotating at about a thousand miles an hour to the east. When he came down, he should have landed like 3,000 miles out in the Pacific Ocean. But he didn't. He landed east of where he took off mm. in New Mexico. Right, 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 right. Makes a lot of sense. I'm, I'm like, going to say some crazy things, Dave. And those things are oh, no, they're not, about the ball. Dude, they're not crazy to me. No, no, no. I when I talk about the ball, it's crazy. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> um, so, you know, we're... we're uh, we're, so we're, that, that that picture right there that you have there, yeah. you've proven that that's all of New Mexico right there? Oh, yeah, absolutely, 100%. They just, 100%. Kind of, they just 100%. bent it? And, and the, even Neil deGrasse Tyson now, the actor, says uh, uh, that, that this is from a fisheye lens, right? This is 120,000 feet, no curvature. This is a video, okay? No curvature. And again, this balloon landed pretty close. Isn't to Isn't there the supposed to be a dome or something like that, Dave? Uh, I mean, isn't that, I've heard those theories that anytime someone sends a rocket up there, it hits a dome. Well, so when you look at NASA and SpaceX, all their rockets go whoop and they go right, right out and then they go down and they crash into Bermuda Triangle or wherever. And you're watching a cartoon going to space. But this was the Go Fast rocket uh, launched in Arizona. It went, and again, Uninterrupted footage. NASA or SpaceX, watch any launch. Within the first 10 or 15 seconds, there's at least a half a dozen cuts. Movie cut, movie cut, different angle, different angle, because it's all a production. This thing went straight up. And if you could hear the sound on this, it went kerplunk, like, wow. like a stone going into a pond. It went, it went into a thicker medium and it started floating really strange. And, and then the, the sound changed. And, but you heard it go into a thicker medium, some sort of plasma or something. Another thing that happened is the moon. We could see the moon. Well, the moon, we looked it up, was over in New Zealand at that time. So, you know, if this, if this was the Earth... So wait, this is actual footage right here that we're looking at. This is at. actual footage. So, so I thought you were going to show me something hitting the dome. So it didn't hit the dome. This no, no, actually... it, it hit liquid. It hit something. We think that space is... Outer space is liquid, is water. Then that would kind of go with the firmament and all that that it talks about in the Bible, correct? Yeah, page one, God separated the waters from the waters and put the, put the firmament. But Arizona, if Arizona's right here, that rocket at altitude is literally a quarter of a millimeter off of here. The moon was down here. Ah, uh, so the right? moon should have been on the other side. Okay. The moon should, they, they should not have been able to see the moon because the moon, right, right. You know, the moon was is. down here. Okay. Okay, I and see there's the, the moon right, right across the flat Earth plane. Right, I do see that. Um, so, so what the what are extraterrestrials? What are aliens? I have so many questions. Yeah, yeah. So, extraterrestrials and aliens in your mind, same thing. Well, I think they're interdimensional or interplanetary. Or I like separating them. I think interdimensional things. I call them aliens. Those are okay. they say that they're demons, whatever. That's okay. I'm very interested in that stuff. Can't prove it. I believe it but I can't right. prove it. So I don't really talk about that. But what I like to talk about is extraterrestrials. But before we do, this is a launch and this is a projection. This is a hologram like Tupac and everyone's oh, watching yeah. this hologram. Oh my gosh. It just cut out right there. It cut out. Right. It happened. And this happens all the time. Well, they did that with nine 11. 
Yeah, well, we we know that. <laughs> um, so so where wow, look at that. Yeah, and we've caught them. We were looking on Google Earth at NASA at the Space Center. And we saw, wow, look at these spotlights. It, it's like they, they must be lighting up the thing with these spotlights, and they looked really weird. And we were able to zoom in enough where we could see the name of the company and like the serial number. And we looked it up, and it was from a holographic projection company. No way. Yes, on Damn. NASA's lawn. Wow. Okay. 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 That's crazy. Yeah. So um, there's so many different directions I can go with this. Uh, what, what you were just talking about something. We were just about to talk about something. I went back to NASA for a second. Well, it, it will. One thing that Neil deGrasse, another way that Neil deGrasse Tyson convinced Joe Rogan on Joe Rogan's show that we went to the moon was we had enough fuel to get there. Did you hear him say that? Yeah, yeah, I did. I mean, we had enough fuel. I mean, I put I, on the glasses. I, I and that convinced glasses. Joe. <laughs> I mean, Joe Rogan was the poster boy. We never went to the moon. There's yeah. no way. But There's big no money way. got to him. Commercializ- commercialism got right. to him. And- There's no way people went to the moon. That, that People went to the moon. There's no way. That was his quote. He was the guy. Then all of a right. sudden, he had Neil deGrasse Tyson on. Yep. Got I a saw huge that. contract. I was- Got a you know television series, all the money, all the power, and then he just totally turned around, two faced sellout shell. I can't disagree. I mean, I um you know, have I ever met Joe Rogan? No. Do I think he's a good guy? Yes. But money gets I, I, people I, makes him weird. He, yeah. All right. So he he sold his soul for money. That's my opinion. So okay. Dave, we're spinning at a thousand miles an hour, orbiting at sixty six thousand miles an hour, chasing the sun at over a half a million miles an hour. While that entire system's moving sideways at one point. And not hitting anything. (laughs) Not hitting everything. And all of the planets, they're not going around the sun like this in all different directions. They're all on the same plane. Earth Earth is going around here. Mars is going around here. Jupiter's going around here, right? They're all, they're not going, some are not going this way. They're all keeping up with the sun on the same plane. Even though the sun's curving around in a huge circle. Okay. Right, 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 right. And, and somehow they all just maintain on that plane, or are they all just above us, circling around at the same altitude? Right. What's what? And just a little side note here. So the whole reason for them lying to us about this is to for humanity to feel to feel minuscule, to feel like we're nothing, oh, to I feel like we have yeah. no power. So Dave, yeah, if you, um. Are you, are you a, a, a religious or Bible Christian? Once I'm religious, I'm, I believe in God. And yeah, I mean, I don't okay, go to yeah, church. I got it. I you believe, go to church you believe in a creator that was. Yes, absolutely. Create. I'm with you also. I used to be a full on atheist until I discovered the flat earth. Um, when you try to dilute something, dilute a message, what do you do? You, you pour it into something bigger. Like if you have some juice, you pour it into some water, a bigger container, it's just diluted. They're diluting God's message by with infinite space. Okay. So if you are. If you believe you're a speck that grew out from pond scum by chance, right? We evolved into amoebas and fish and worms, that, you know, and monkeys and then humans, and you're flying out of control, lost in space, you, in a godless or distant god universe. You've deluded takes away all god's purpose, message, right? Right. So, so then you feel we're basically an accident. Well, that's, that's what they want you to believe that we're a total accident. That um you know, that you're not significant, that you're not at the center of creation. The truth is we're at the center of creation. We're here on this realm and nobody can break our free will unless we willingly give it to them. So they keep us in fear, fear of asteroids, fear of nuclear bombs, fear of running out of food, water, fuel, fear of terrorism, just fear, 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 fear of little bugs flying through the air, right? And so they've separated us. They have us because they know They don't want us to know that the power of our minds create our reality. Dave, everything you have in your life, you created with your thoughts, your emotions, your passion, okay? Your soul gives you that spark of life. Without your soul, you're dead. I agree a thousand percent with that. So so I believe the currency of this world is souls. And the evil bastards that are running this place have sold their souls and they want your soul. And they drill down through all the layers of protection, like love and hope and joy and, and you know, passion. They drill down through all of that. They're trying to make us just separate us, take away everything that makes us human and steal our soul. And it's funny that they call this system we live in the soul lure system. Oh, very true. Yeah. Okay. 
What about like there's people that talk about the hollow earth? Do you believe there is deep underground bases? You do believe that, right? I absolutely believe that there are layers there. You okay. know, the, the deepest hole ever dug is, um, is just short of eight miles. And that's equivalent. If we compare it to an apple, that's like drilling halfway through the skin of an apple. Think how thin right. the skin is. And they use ground penetrating radar, Dave, to see what they were going to dig in next. And it was wrong every step of the way. So okay. somehow they drill halfway through the skin. They're wrong with all their predictions, but they know what the next 4,000 miles to this core is, right? And they tell us it's a magnetic molten core. Well, if you know anything about magnets, you heat them up to a certain point and they lose their magnetism. There's no such thing as a molten magnet, okay? okay. It doesn't exist. So this is all a fairy, story, a, 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 you know, a fairy tale. Um, but you asked about extraterrestrials. So this is, you know, they tell us what the heck is going on. They, they literally tell us everything. So what's a, so this is how I see the world. Well, right now, this, this, is, this is how I describe the world. The world is like a giant lake. All of the continents like are... Into, would you think we're like cupped into something? Like we're... So we're not a continent at the bottom of a ball. We're literally surrounded by the, the container of our water is the land that's higher. Like the edge of a lake is where the land is higher than the water. That's the edge right. of a lake. Right. right. Take that land away and all the water is going to flow somewhere. The edge of our world pond, our world lake is Antarctica. Antarctica is the highest land on earth. We live in the Antarctic basin. Large bodies of water at rest lay flat, testably, scientifically provable flat, and we can see too far for the ball, the, for, the, for the size of the ball that we have. I can't believe I'm like thinking like you make complete sense right now. Dave, I, th here's the problem. People, the people are afraid, you know, and by the way, the hard work's been done. 2015, when we were into this, the, the people just freaked out. But now there's so many people awake. Dave, you're joining a group, you know, you're, Aligning. I don't want to say you're joining because there's nothing to join. There's no Hold off on the Kool-Aid. No, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you're, 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 you're seeing reality. And, and by the way, people are like, what difference does the shape of the earth make? I still got to go to work on Monday. Dave, yeah. my whole life changed, right? I don't go to work on Monday. I don't go to work on Tuesday, yeah. right? Everything changed for me. And the people that have, that have come into my life, like you and others, it's all because of this. And there's great, I have better friends than I've ever had before. Amazing. Yeah, and I'll, and I'll say my life changed immensely in 2020 uh, with the viral video that I made and all that. I mean, it's just, it just, and well, number one, quitting drinking. So like, I, I'm with you on that. My life Wait. has changed. I feel like my vibration's higher and everything's just. You're following your people. passion. You're following yes. your soul. So the, the analogy I use is Neo in the, in the documentary, The Matrix, right? At the beginning, he's, something's wrong with the world he he's he can't you know he's something's wrong and he's depressed i think a lot of depression in this world is because people minds have been captured by the mainstream media and and all of the propaganda their their minds can't hear their souls talking to them anymore right agreed but when you align with your soul everything works out i mean everything this world is magical and and once you align with your soul so getting back to the matrix Neo at the end of the movie figured out who he is, where he is. He unplugged from the matrix, whether it's uh, symbolic or, you know, physically, I couldn't tell you. Um, and he found out who he is, where he is, what he is, and the power of his mind. What's happier, the Neo at the end of the movie or the Neo at the beginning of the movie? Yeah, no, you're right, the end. Right? Who has more power? Here's the thing. Um, all, the, all the stuff that's going on in the world right now, and you say it all the time when you're talking about masks, what if everyone in the world said, no more masks. I'm opening my business and we're not even paying our taxes and we're going to ignore everything that you say. There's nothing they can do. You know, the, the time we're the 99%. No, we're the 99.99999%. They are nothing. They are nothing. And the only power they have over us is the power of our mind. So they put us in a prison without walls and it's the globe. People think that we're trapped on a globe spinning through outer space and we need the government to protect us global warming and the penguins and but but maybe we are could be trapped in this flat so, earth dome too i mean I, I hear you people say the dome is just like the globe well i don't think so and uh, by the way if you don't want to believe in a dome that's fine maybe the dome is just protecting this little bubble we're in and there you could still get through it i don't know but what if, Dave, what if the world was set up more like this? Here we are, 
our sun and moon circle around in this inner piece here. This, this here is Antarctica. And then out here, there's more land. So more extra, extra is more, territory land, more extra terra. So if this is the inner space, what would this be called? The outer space. So extraterrestrials come from outer space uh. beyond Antarctica. So if an extraterrestrial got in some advanced technology, you know, free energy machine. Did I say Germania? Uh, there's all sorts of names on here. Okay, you're just naming them. Okay, you okay. Yeah. So that's our planet that we know right there in the middle. This is and our our be- world, our world, and this is our sun and our moon, and then this is the the dark body that eclipses our moon. That's a whole other topic, but. This is one po- very good possibility. I kind of believe this is true. There's a story called The Iron Republic, which uh, you, can li- you can buy the book or you can listen to it on YouTube. It's also in my app. Um, and it's a story about um, a boat in, I think it was in the 1800s, late 1800s. It was a Senator from New York, I believe, uh, got on a ship and he was just ex- exploring Antarctica and he found a uh, opening and he was going through and then he popped out and he was lost at sea for a month. And then they found this other land and there was people there and a boat came out, greeted them. And they said that they were, um, they used to live in here in the 1600s, but they didn't like the tyranny. And so they left and they brought all their civilization out and it was called the Iron Republic. And th- this was um, written in uh, 1901, I think. 19, was it written in 1901? Yeah, yeah, it was written in 1901, a series of articles in the Florida Magazine. And uh it talked about technologies that we're just getting now. They had all. Well, I also know that Antarctica is off limits, correct? I mean, totally off limits. I mean, but they've also said that Nazi Germany, uh, stationed down there after World War II, uh, started dealing with extraterrestrial technologies. Dave, there's um, maps of Antarctica without ice on them. So the whole story of Antarctica always being frozen. You know, the way I look at it is, if um, if this was, if let's say the, our world at one point was just our pond, just our pond. So it kind of looks like this. And our sun is oscillating in here. What if our sun moved out here and then started circling out here? All of this ice would melt. Correct. There would be a ring out here, kind of like this. And now you'd have, and then a, a new sun is born under a star that would be Polaris. And now you have two worlds that don't even, this one, this world would know about this world, but this world would not know about this world. Right. So- Again, these are things that are beyond our ability to investigate right now. So these are speculation, but there's plenty of stuff to prove that we are not spinning, twirling, and whirling. So remember all of those motions that we had. You're familiar with the Georgia Guidestones, right? Yeah, I just read that off the other day. <laughs> yeah, so YouTube we're <clears throat> we're corkscrewing through space, traveling trillions of miles in four different directions at once. Do you know that in the Georgia Guidestones, there's a little hole in the middle one? I did hole. not know that. Okay, yeah, what does that represent? And if you look through that hole, you see Polaris. Do a time lapse, all the stars circle around. How the heck has this been up for over 40 years and Polaris has never moved from that hole? It's interesting. They don't have an answer for that. We're traveling in four different directions at speeds you can't even imagine. Traveling, you know. So that, this, that planet, that there is stationary stays right there this doesn't, doesn't move. move this you look through it there's polaris and then there's also another slit in uh i think it's um i might the what about the pyramids this. the pyramids uh they were supposed to line up with the constellation orion right yeah and they still do okay how is that possible didn't. how you're are right, all the yeah, stars right. mimicking us dave breathe it's okay you have any water Drink yeah no water. i mean dude it's just yeah it's it's, it's just so, God, you know think about this dave here's the sun and here's the earth so if you're on this side of the earth, that's daytime. And if you're on this side of the earth, that's nighttime, nighttime. right? Yeah. So let's say it's uh, January and I'm right here. It's midnight because this is midnight because that would be noon. This is midnight right here. And I'm looking at stars over there. Six months later, I'm over here. Midnight is on this side now. Right, right, right. And you I could look a whole different star system. I could look that way and see the same stars. Right, that's true. I've always wondered that. That's always played my mind because that is true. Right. Yes. Okay. All right. Dave, impossible. I call right. it. Right. Yeah. Impossible. That's always been something that that has bothered me. I'm not gonna lie. 
<laughs> I don't think you're you're just dude. Me. I mean, how do you tell your family you're a flat earther now? Well, you you give them the flat earth app challenge. So we're gonna talk about seasons in a second, but play. You know, the one that got I think flat, people think flat earthers think that everything's just two dimensional, or they just look at it a piece of paper. Yeah. No, don't absolutely understand not. that there's just a it's just not so much we're not saying flat really you're just saying be it's nothing a, it's a, it's a plane here but we the highest mountain what is you know what is it fifteen thousand feet or whatever and the deepest hole the you know the deep of the ocean is like six miles the deepest hole is only seven and a half miles we don't know what's above or below any of that right right, right. Agreed. I mean, we, we have yeah I'm, I'm coming up here I'm, I'm saying honestly in this interview i don't know and that's fine. You're doing a damn good job, a damn good job convincing me. You did the last time, but then time goes by, you forget a little bit, and you say, okay, maybe it's, you know. So <laughs> let's look at some southern plane flights. Now, northern plane flights and on the ball and the globe are very similar because they're all just circle around the middle. It's the southern flights because on the globe, on the flat earth, on the globe, the southerns are down here, okay? But on flat earth, they're super far apart. So on but the in globe, space, in space, there should be no up or down. It's just like a vacuum, right? It's it's a space should be. There is no north or south in space, right? I mean, everything well, in space, space there there is no up or down unless you're right. relating it to something. Earth gives us a down. So, Dave, down is down for me. Okay, right. down is down for somebody in Australia. Point down, point down. That's down, up, yeah. and up. Now, forward and backwards, left and right, are all relative to your position, right? Your forward is my backwards. Right? So really, if I'm on a sphere, I'd be pointing out like I'd be on the side there. Right. So if I want to go from Buenos Aires to Perth, this would be the fastest route. But because of the Antarctic Treaty, we're not even allowed to fly over Antarctica because we could disturb the migrational path of the penguins. Right? Go ahead. Really? Is, that Amazon. The, is that really the excuse? That's really the excuse. Okay. Okay. So, and they, they don't want to disturb the ice. The ice is pristine, right? So let's say if, all right, when, <coughs> we're not allowed to fly over, you could fly around, just come around the outside. That would right, be the shortest right. route. But Dave, this is the plane routes that they go. They go from Perth, they either stop in Miami or Houston. Then they stop again in California. Then they stop again in Sydney. And then they fly over here. It takes like 26 hours. Right, I've done right? it. Or they go here, Europe, Singapore, Perth. That's the route that the flights take. Okay. Now, this is people say, well, it's because you have to stop. They got to get fuel. They got to go this way, pick up other passengers. Um, cool story. There, but there's direct flights, and the direct flights are, are amazing. Um, we had Max Egan, who was totally anti flat earth, and he goes, I'm flying from Sydney to Australia, and let's do a live stream. And and track him the whole way. So we did a. Uh, well, what do you mean, Sydney? That is in Australia. No, 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 not Sydney. Santiago. Thank okay, you, Santiago. Okay. Correct me. Um, so we tracked him. We 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 did a live stream. He was on the airport. We saw him get on the airplane. We watched the plane take off. You know, and then he then he disconnected, and we tracked the plane. And we're looking at the route that they're taking, and they're showing us this route. You know, all the way out here. You know, uh, you know, kind of dipping under the globe. If if I had a globe map there but um he took compass readings on his flight okay. and the compass readings he's like i should have been going south but i wasn't and here are the compass readings that he took so we did so we charted okay if we want to go from santiago to australia this is the path right so all of these green lines are northwest this line right here this purple line if you can see it is the only time the plane would be actually going west and then these yellow lines are southwest, south southwest, you know, and then it's south, right? And they they these are his compass readings, and it makes perfect sense on a flat Earth. It makes perfect sense on a flat Earth. Yeah, it does. Right. And so you see the That's compass; amazing. it turns because this is the magnetic center. Yes, yes. Bing. There it is. Yeah. And on a globe, what would that read? It would just be south. It would be it would, it be, would be south and then a, south southeast or it, yeah. not, it it makes no sense. Makes it perfect, perfect, perfect sense. Golly, uh, this is crazy. It seems crazy, but he, Dave, 
you know that these bastards lie to us. About- and I know that 100%. And Dave, this is all about mind control. And this is a spiritual war beyond what people can even imagine. This is, we're in this realm, this, 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 I have no better word than realm, I guess. You know, yeah. I don't want to say video game because all oh, people, all oh, you think it's a game yeah, simulation. Yeah. We're in this realm. We're having an experience. I, I believe, I, I believe, Dave Weiss, not all, I'm just saying my belief, that our souls are in the heavens above. Sounds pretty good. Maybe the stars are our souls. And then we incarnate here with our soul, our soul group. And we have this experience here to expand the mind of the creator. Right? And our only rule is don't break anyone's free will and don't lose control of your soul. That's it. But that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get us to break free will. You know, how many people did George Bush kill? Zero. He convinced other order followers to kill other order right. followers. Right. Right? right. And that's on them. Like, and that's kind of like what's happening with the vaccine right now. Right. It's, they, they're if you want to go to work, you got to take it. Yeah. And they're, they're, they're not forcing us. They're no. coercing us. Right. But if you know the truth, you got to hold strong. Dave, there is, everyone knows this about me. There's nothing you could do to get me to take that vaccine. Hell nothing. no. I'm with you on that. Nothing. 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 Uh, agreed. No, so, that, that's a, a definite no, no, right there. I, I can't believe people are just yeah. so, <laughs> so gung ho and, and, and uh, flaunting it when they yeah. take it. It's, it's oh it's, my God. It's, Have you seen some of the songs? No. What do you oh, like? Are they... the, the, this girl singing the Pfizer song. She's so happy. Oh, oh God. It, it'll, it'll make you sick. I'll send it to you because I that does to. make me sick. I, dude, I'll I have to send it. The self righteous, like, uh, Oh my God! If I just authoritative, oh, it's disgusting. I can't, I can't even be around these people, bro. And now I'm hearing, this is off, off subject, but now you know you're hearing about the shedding going on with the vaccine. That even yeah. being around these people, you can get something. I mean, I don't know. It's- Dave, Dave, we're gonna take a little, a little, um, a, just a quick side. I gotta play this song for you, all right? All right, go for it. All right, can you see that? Um, yeah. Hold on, I gotta just type in. Oh no! Nation card. Oh no! Oh no! Are you, are you ready? Yeah. All right. Tell me if you can hear this. This girl is on Pfizer. This girl is on Pfizer. She's hopped up on Pfizer. This girl is on Pfizer. Oh. oh. Kind of makes you lose hope in humanity, doesn't it? Oh man! <laughs> oh, it's like flaunting a low IQ, man. Yeah, crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, all right. oh, that's, that was brutal. Back to flat Earth. So here's a good way to prove the Earth. <laughs> <laughs> good little break. <laughs> little break. Hey, I took you from flat Earth to insanity. Back to flat. Earth. Yeah, not back insanity. to the flat Earth again. <laughs> hey, how about this to prove the Earth is a globe? Um, they tell us the circumference of Antarctica is about twenty is about thirteen thousand miles. So just take a boat around Antarctica and track how far you go. Okay. Problem is, nobody's been able to do it. Captain Cook did it. It took him three and a half years. He went over sixty thousand miles. Interesting. So he's going around the flat Earth. He's going around the flat Earth. You know, and you can't tell that you're turning right. You know, you're dead reckoning east or west is a circle. You know, people, people have a hard time understanding that when, you, when you're going east or west. Here's my magnetic center, and I'm going to push this compass 270 degrees dead west, but I have to keep turning. Otherwise, I'm not heading west. I have to keep this needle pointing right. to the center. Okay. So west is a circle. Same thing on a globe. It's the same. You always have to correct to the north on a flat earth. On a globe earth, if you're south of the equator, you'd have to correct to the south. But we have testimony from ship's captains in the Indian Ocean saying when they try to dead wreck in east or west, they always have to correct to the north. That All right, here's the question I get from everybody. Wait, watch this. Watch this. Straight line, dead wreck in east. As soon as I don't turn, I'm heading south. Boom. I'm heading south. Correct. All right. What's the question? So when people are out at sea, you know, they say they see this all the time. When they see the ship go below the horizon. Mm-hmm. 
they say, oh, it's disappearing. It's that's because the earth curvature. But when you get a telescope, you can bring it right back up. I know about this. Okay. Okay. So, but can you explain that to my audience? Yeah. So it has to do with the angular resolution limits of our eyes, the thickness of the atmosphere it, it, down on the ocean. And then the, what I call the wave front edge, these little waves here are blocking the ship as you pull back. Okay. And let's look at disappearing from the bottom up right there, disappearing from the bottom up. And now it's gone. Now, Glover would say it's over the curve, but you know it's not over the curve because we were just able to zoom in on it. Right. Hmm. Right? Here, here's something like you look at this. It looks like this bottom of this building is below the curve, but you can see the atmospheric compression. All of these balconies are the same height, but they're getting compressed. It's oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You can see that. Atmospheric yeah. phenomena. And on different days, you can see different numbers of floors. Does that mean that the earth is flexing? You know, it makes, it, it keeps changing. This is a bay, no tide, skunk bay. And you can see the beach over here. But as the day goes on and the atmospheric conditions change, the beach disappears, the buildings disappear, right? Well, it maybe the also the also looks like the water's rising and no, it's lower. not. There, this is a bay. It's a, it's it's not it's not a bay. It's it's a. There's no tide here. Okay. Okay. There's no tide. This is just atmospheric. You know, the whole thing disappears. It it's it's the way. I have a question. So, like, if the Earth is spinning. It makes sense that why can't you just if the earth is going how many miles an hour is the earth spinning? A thousand miles an hour at the equator, less everywhere else. That's okay. Another so problem. couldn't you hypothetically get if you wanted to travel somewhere, time the earth spin and shoot up into the sky and then land somewhere else? <clears throat> yeah, well that's what they say, but the the Globers say that um I thought you were gonna say something else. Like you wouldn't have to go fly. In other words, you just go up and down. Yeah, but they say land that the somewhere entire else. atmosphere is spinning with the earth. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's like okay. But but is that true? No. It's insane. How does a summer breeze push the wind this way and then that way and up and down? If everything was velcroed down, nothing would move. Right? Right. How does the air at forty thousand feet outrun the spin of the earth? It's it's rotating to the east. While the earth is spinning to the east, it's outrunning the earth. It would lag behind like you know, when you're in a, like a blender. So this is the same principle as when you see this, the, the sun setting or rising, it's really just furthering away this way. Cause it's not, it's not necessarily going down or up. It's the globe isn't turning. You're saying that the sun is just, let me, let me show you my flat earth kitchen. Ready? Yeah. So here's a line. And I showed in this video that it's level and I'm bringing my uh, little son along the line, showing you that I'm going in a level path. Right here, I have some, these could be mountains, it could be clouds, just the atmospheric deck of opacity, whatever. And I'm showing you that I never go below it. I'm just going along. So this is the sun moving along. Now I got a camera on the other end of the counter that's on the counter looking up at this line. And let's look at the same thing again from that view. Kind of looks like it's going down. Doesn't that line look like it's going down? Yeah. And as you see, the sun is going to eclipse this. Now, if this was 20, 30 miles away, that would look like the horizon to you. It would merge with the horizon. Correct. You're and right. The sun just goes beyond it. Now I'm going to compare it to a real sunset. Okay? okay. So look at this line. It's almost going straight down. It's not. Yeah, that's what it looks like. And look, here's the horizon, but watch where the sun sets. This is a real sunset. It's setting behind the atmospheric deck of opacity. It's just setting. It's just going beyond. Wow. It's just going beyond. If I have the, the sun here and I just move it away, it looks like it's setting. It's all perspective, Dave. And, and what about eclipses? I mean, yeah. that that's always made no sense to me because, okay, all of a sudden the moon and the sun are like the same size and they cross paths. It looks like, you know, how does that even happen? And the sun's supposed to be trillions of miles away, right? The, and no, the, the moon sun, is, sun is 93 million miles away, but they fit perfectly. I just explain that. I mean, Dave, you're so you, wait, did, it, didn't the, the Mayans never said the earth was flat? Yes, they did, and they all did. The Mayans, so Paul McCartney, why do you have Paul McCartney up there? 
because he says the fool on the hill sees the sun going down, but the eyes in his head see the world going round. Okay, so all of the ancient, all of the civilizations before the religion of NASA um, thought the earth was flat. They all had flat cosmologies until these psychopaths came and told us it's a spinning ball. Um, and people say, well, we've known for 2000 years. No, we haven't. In the 1920s, they were still teaching flat earth in, in American public schools. 1920s, Dave. They Are you serious? 100%. You never saw my interview with Ruth? I, Hold on. They were in the 1920s. They were teaching flat earth. So I was interviewing. What, so what do they, what's out? So we don't know what's outside the firmament. We don't know. Looks like space to me. Could it still be space? Dave, I was interviewing this woman about the world's fair is 102 years old in February of 2020, just before this COVID thing started. Let's hear <clears> it. <throat> can we hear it or what's that? Can we hear her? No, you, you can't. Uh, I'll send you the link and you could link okay. it and, and link it. Um, <clears throat> but this has been mirrored on a hundred channels. And uh, I asked her, she had such a great memory. I said, where'd you go to you know, elementary school? Knew the name of the school, the street, the teacher, the kids in the class. I was like, what did they teach you in science about the earth? And she goes, they taught me the earth is flat. And I was like, whoa. And she said, but then a few years later, they changed it. They just changed it. And we found a woman in Croatia in the 1930s that said all the schools taught flat earth. And then we found newspaper oh. articles uh, about teachers being persecuted in the early 1900s for trying to teach heliocentrism, the globe, in classes, right? This was thrust upon us, right? The, the elite said, okay, <clears throat> we need to take, we, the people are gaining too much power, the industrial revolution, people are rising up too much. We can't let them know there's more. We need to limit them. We need to keep them in a shortage mentality, mm -hmm. right? Because if there's a shortage mentality, if you're afraid, <clears throat> excuse me right if you're afraid dave you don't you're not maybe not the best person you know you you, right. you might be scavenging a little more you might be hoarding a little more you might be you know taking care of yourself first when we should all be taking care of yeah they, we, we know it's a lowered vibrational field that they yeah. control us through that dense vibration yeah that yeah. lower vibration that's how you control 100 percent, dave and the thing is, we've been brainwashed so much. Like I did a radio show this morning with these two guys. They couldn't even understand anything I was saying because they're like, but, 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 you know, well, well when you fall off the edge and I fully described to them. Well, I'm, I'm going to ask you some questions that I think my audience would like to ask, but I already know the answers to this because you've told me the last time and Good. pictures from outer space that NASA puts out that publicizes. Yeah. Now well, we got to, those are fake, right? They're CGI. Well, it's not me saying they're CGI, it's NASA saying they're CGI, right? People say, well, you flat earthers say everything's fake. No, NASA says it's fake. So the blue marble, which was the one that was on everyone's iPhone um, and everyone thought it was a real picture of Earth, Robert Simmons, a NASA visual artist said he made it in Photoshop, right? He made it in Photoshop and he was too lazy to make new clouds. He stepped and repeated the same clouds again and again. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and then, and then, then a couple years later, we get this picture. Look at the United States. They can't even get their proportions yeah. right. Now, people will say, well, that's because it's at a different angle. And, uh, you know, this reminds me of like what they're doing with Biden right now. <laughs> oh, no kidding. Dave, you know what I mean? They're the, doing the, the same, same shit. Crap. You're right. It's the same crap, right? Dave, the whole world is a fucking stage. It's insane. It's insane. And so, okay, the, you want to claim the lens thing? Well, let's look at things. We can drive across Mexico and Baja and scientifically prove that's 934 miles. You agree with that, right? Yeah. So that science tells us, science, and people say, well, you, you're science deniers. No, no, we're denying your bullshit pseudoscience. And that's what they want to, be, and people need to understand that Luciferians want to make science the new religion, right. which is all fake. It, well, by the way, there is real science, you know, like orthopedic doctors are awesome. Alabama yeah. doctors are Rockefeller's trolls, you know? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So they tell us the diameter, which is a straight line, has no curves, is 7,917 miles. I should be able to fit eight and a half of these in between these two lines. Eight and a half fit on there. That shows you, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that's another painting, right? 
This is a picture of Pluto. Now, how far is Pluto? How bright would the sun be? How did they get this long exposure shot with a spacecraft yeah. traveling 60,000 miles an hour? And it happens to have a desert that's shaped like Pluto. Or is that my fucking imagination? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, geez. Dave, they're mocking us. Space Command and Starfleet Command. Right? Right. You, you know, listen, I'm with you on all of the, the Trump Ooh. stuff. Like, uh, what yeah. is going on? Who is he? What's he doing? Is he letting uh, the thing you talked about today or you got to let Are they all part of the game themselves? Is everyone just playing a part? Well, you know, I think that Trump might be controlled also in some way. Yeah, but, that's but, not out of the question, of course. But, I'm not a 100%... Imagine if he'd pulled the Insurrection Act. Well, there would be more mayhem than if he didn't pull it. I mean, right. all of the, you know, people, everyone. So maybe letting the whole thing fall apart. Maybe. God, I, as you said, Dave, I freaking hope you're right. Yeah. <laughs> you're I, right. But the best what, I can do, man. What is going on here? Yeah. Okay. That, okay. Yeah. <laughs> what is going on there? So you're saying there's more to that photo than them I, just... They, they all got their hands on a globe. What is this globe worshipping? What is this? This is... I don't know what this is, Dave. I don't either. I mean... I don't know. I don't know what it is. Hey, did, did you watch the Mars uh, helicopter take off the other day? No, I don't watch that bullshit. <clears throat> well, good for you. But think about this. I this know, is... dude. I'm, I'm, I'm on board most of it with you because I know it's their... It's fake. It's just, it's fake. I know it's. Dave, you've ever flying out. You ever see a, you've seen a helicopter. Helicopters can't fly to the top of Everest because the air is too thin. Well, right. they tell us that the air, the thickness of the air on Mars is, is like 150,000 feet on here. But this helicopter can fly because its propellers go much faster. This isn't the helicopter. This is a helicopter taking a picture of its shadow on Mars. How did they get a picture of the, the blades? Why is this shadow of the body darker? What the? Yeah. Fuck? Look at this thing, Dave. I could do that. Look at what, what are we even looking at? People eat it up. This is real. So the biggest conspiracy in all this or truth is that there's people hard at work, hard at work, hiding our reality from us. Dave, here's well, people a, here's or the, beings or whatever you want to call them. Here's the operation, what they, they started. In uh, 1946, uh, they discovered the ice wall. They started the, 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 the controllers of our world, the controllers that we know, just started going, okay, wait a minute. There's something going on out here. Then they, um, then they did um, um, Project Deep Freeze. What is that? Project Deep Freeze? I can't see it. It's covered. Uh, Project Deep Freeze. And that's where they discovered the firmament. They started investigating that. So they quickly created NASA to hide it. Right then, in 1959, when all the countries were killing each other and wars for resources and whatever, they said, you know, Admiral Byrd said, "There's more resources out here and land bigger than America that no human has ever set eyes upon." And then everyone signs a treaty that nobody could ever go there till the year 2041. Okay, you can't even question it. Then we had Object Fi uh, um, Project Fishbowl, where they started trying to blow a hole in the firmament with bombs. People say they're nuclear bombs, but I just say bombs. And then the Apollo missions to make you believe you live on a ball and to hide the firmament. Okay. These are the, the, the six operations to gain the control of the world. Jeez. Yeah. Crazy, crazy stuff, Dave. You know, they tell us that the earth is bulging at the middle because of the centrifugal force, right? It's spinning right. at the equator. It bulges 14 miles high. At what point does an airplane have to climb up, three times its altitude just to skim over a hump of water. Yeah. And why Correct. does that water cover These Africa? Are all valid points, man. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm, I'm just... Dave, how do we have just water? one of those things where you're like... Uh... Look at this water. This is calm water, right? I mean, yeah. it, we're spinning, twirling, and whirling in four different directions, and we have perfectly calm lakes. So where does weather come from? Like hurricanes and tornadoes and... Well, everything here is electric and magnetic. We live in this, uh, in, this, in this free energy system where the sun and the moon are the cathode and anode of the battery. The salt water carries the current and the land is the salt bridge. So we have this energetic system. And so all of the, the electricity is coming here. And then we have heating and cooling. They do tell us breezes are caused by that. 
and it, the energy is fueling these storms. That's how they're controlling storms because they're projecting energy. Which also kind of the next big lie they're kind of they're trying to push is global warming or climate change, right? Right. I mean, with all the spraying in the sky, you know, I used to be called the conspiracy theorists because of that, but now they admit it and nobody yeah. cares. Nobody yeah, cares. nobody cares about that anymore. Oh, nobody that cares. yeah. We I used to, to bring that up to people. Those are called chemtrails. Those yeah. are chemtrails. There's contrail and then there's chemtrails. Right. Now everyone pretty much accepts that. Yeah. But I'm telling you, not and there's a lot of people that accept this flat earth, but I still say most people look, I know, I'm gonna admit that I know that our reality is a lie. Dave, it, it's it's a lie so big that it, it's, it's really just hard. hard. Oh, the satellites. That's what I was going to bring up next. That's what that is, right? All right. So, <clears throat> so remember, satellites aren't floating in space. They're falling around the Earth, but the same rate that they're falling is they're going, they're missing the curve. So they're falling around the Earth, right? And because there's no resistance, they just keep on going forever. Cool story, right? So you have all these satellites going in all these different directions. But the Earth isn't staying still. It is going in four different directions at once, okay? And they're all following it. Now, a geostationary satellite is a satellite that stays over the same point of land. If we had a geostationary satellite over Australia, you know, it would have to rotate with the Earth, right? Right. So imagine this is a geostationary satellite that's like this guy right here. And it okay. stays over this piece of land. It has to match the spin of the Earth the curving circle of the earth around the sun and all of the other motions that are happening. And somehow it just remains, it just perfectly remains there. Dave, that's the dumbest crap ever. Well, I, you know, I, there's been times I've looked out into the night sky and I'll see like what looks like a star moving really fast. What I would say is a UFO. And then people will say, well, that's a satellite. Well, Dave, it's a, it's a hundred percent a UFO because you don't know what it is. So it's an unidentified right. flying object. So the, the satellites, Satellites are balloons. NASA owns all of the helium companies in the world, and they are the largest consumer of helium, and they have tens of thousands of these things up there. Is that what you're seeing? Maybe, maybe mm. not. I don't know. I don't know what you're seeing up there. It could be some of these, but um, there could be other electrical phenomenon up there that we just can't explain. So this is what satellites are, but we can prove that you can't see a satellite. An airplane, <clears throat> 747, pretty big, right? You've seen the 747 close up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So a 747 at um, cruising altitude is a tiny little dot in the sky, like the, like the lead that sticks out of a tip of a pencil, right? All right. If you doubled the height, could you see it? Absolutely not. Provably, it's too small to see. Well, a satellite is nowhere near the size of True, but yet you can see them. And it's a hundred. That's my question. Then, when higher. I said that, I saw that star. Yeah, you're it, right. It's a hundred or two hundred times higher. Okay, you wouldn't be able to see it. You're right. You're that's absolutely right. Group. All of the stars, you wouldn't be able to see. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about that for a second. If the sun, well, that's supposed to be the stars are. That's just their light that are that's coming to us. The the stars are. In my opinion, they're souls in the heavens above us. Okay. okay. Right. If the sun was, you know, we, we have the, the earth is this tiny little dot next to this big earth, next to the big sun. Right. 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 So, so you move, uh, you know, if I, if I put the sun like a mile over your head, it would fill the entire sky. And if I move it away, it gets smaller due to perspective. And when it gets to 93 million miles away, it's a size of a coin held at arm's length. Right. 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 Okay. So it went from the entire sky, Dave, it reduced to a little tiny spot in the sky. If I made it eight times farther, could you see it again? Yeah, absolutely not. Oh, and would I see it? I would you it. see it? It's too small. It's angular size is too small. So Dave, that's that eight times as far. That's a light hour. The distance light travels in an hour. Okay. They tell us that Polaris is um, 46 times bigger than the sun. So 46 times. So it'd have to be 46 times farther to be not seeable, right? 46 times farther, 46 hours, we'll call it uh, two light days. They tell us Polaris is two, four, wait a minute, 200 or 400. They tell us Polaris is 433 light years away. Damn. We couldn't see it at two light hours. Yeah. Right? 
Dave, when we look at stars, our optics have outgrown their lies. When we look at stars, they're not. What are shooting stars? What are meteors? So what are stars? You know, again, in the planet, it's been, well, proven that we've been bombarded by meteors, asteroids. I mean, no, no, it has, it has not, it is not there. No one's ever seen a asteroid impact the earth. Those bubbles, like the, the, the one in Arizona, the crater, perfect friggin' circle, kind of like the earth was liquefied at some point and a bubble came up and it hardened, right? Okay. It could have been some sort of plasma event. Um, but, you know, again, every time we see one, like in Northern Russia and Siberia, we see it coming in at this crazy angle. Well, that wouldn't, that would make a gouge. That wouldn't make right. a perfect circle. No one's ever seen one hit the earth. So I think when we see uh, meteor showers, well, if, if the earth was a globe, we'd see meteor showers going down. We'd see them right, coming up right. on the horizon. We'd see them going across. We only see them going down. And, and you know, across due to perspective, you never see one shoot up from the horizon. Okay. Yeah, true. And the story is that, like, in August, we have the Perseus meteor shower. And that's because the earth is going through where a comet had once passed. Dave. We're corkscrewing for billions of miles every year in all different directions. We never go through the same spot again twice. How are we going through that same, you know, yeah. we're chasing the sun at a half a million miles per hour. How right. are we going through that same thing? They're electrical, you know, the, the dome in, is the positive, the earth is the negative. And there's a voltage in the air. There's all sorts of stuff that's going on. I don't know. I couldn't tell you what it is. There's a lot of people that do work on that. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what it is. But this is the star Arcturus zoomed in with a consumer. Well, it almost looks like a portal. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe this is the star Capella. Amazing. Slow it down. It's like sacred geometry shapes in there. Right? Yeah. Yeah. This is a star Sirius. Kind of looks like it's underwater. But yet NASA will show you the perfect sphere of it. Right. There's a whole bunch of stars. Wow. Some, some in focus, some out of focus. It's wow. hard to focus on something that may not have Pulsing any. Focusing orbs of energy. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, man. Dave, here's what you do. When someone says, do you think the earth is flat? Just say, I don't know. <laughs> That's what I already do say that. Yeah. I don't know, but you know. I already do say that. Secretly I, between you and me. Let me tell you this. Uh, like uh, those patterns that you see when I did DMT, I mean, I, you know, I, I believe in psychedelics to. Uh, I, did, I did ayahuasca a few times. So did I. And yeah. I did ayahuasca and I Jerema. And uh, I saw things like that. I saw them all. I saw the, the, um, it looked like the cosmic math or whatever you want to call it hey, now, I guess. Of, think of the creation who you know, the human body you can't fathom the creation you're a boxer i saw the mark of a bro i saw the mark of a plain as day like yeah. looking at this light Dave, saw it right there in front of my face this world is amazing think of our bodies how come when you punch somebody they don't die because they should <laughs> i mean how does our body how does our body well maybe a couple have with you <laughs> i'm not saying that <laughs> um how does how, this world is such an amazing place? It's beyond our ability to to understand it, and to believe that we live on a spinning ball is diluting the message of the Creator. There's a verse in the Bible, and everyone quote, I, I I should memorize the verse name, but basically what it says is, um, once you see my creation, you can no longer deny my existence. Okay, and and. So, and that's true because I was a denier of a creator. I was like, I believe the heliocentric model and, and we grew right. up from pond scum, right? And I, cause I saw it on Cosmos, Carl Sagan, Sagan showed me an animation of a rat turning into a monkey and turning into a human. And, uh, <laughs> but then when I realized this world is intelligently designed, everything changes, right? And as, when I asked you if you were religious before, that was probably the wrong question. Here's my, the way I see it. Everybody, you know, there's Muslims and Christians and Jews and all this stuff. Everyone has their religion. As long as they don't break anyone else's free will, help their neighbor, be a good person, then that religion is perfect for them. Agreed. It's perfect. It's perfect. And there, everyone's right. Everyone's right. As long as you don't break those rules. It's a simple game we're in. Don't or you could just say, don't be an asshole. Don't be an asshole. <laughs> 
That's the, How about be a good need, person? Ten commandments. There's only one. Don't be an asshole. Dave, so we go to these flat earth conferences and there's people from all walks of life. I, I want to go to one. I want to go to one. Yeah, next one, next one, we'll, we'll get you there. But the, the thing is, people from all walks of life, every type of person, right? Every old, young, you know, all different classes of people. And it doesn't matter. Everyone is awesome. And I always say, if I drop, like say I had a, a wad of $100 bills in my pocket and I dropped it there, somebody would find me and give it back to me. Someone would find me and say, That's you know, awesome. hey, we found some money, you know, and they would give it back. I, it, the the what flat earth does to people and by the way there's plenty of good people plenty of people that have found the creator they're just lost they just don't know that they're lost they're doing pretty well life is good fine but when you understand that you are at the center of creation not you know the 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 the, the actors you know that tell us uh you know if you think that you're the center of creation that's just such a bad trait that's crazy yeah. because the universe is so big they're deluding god but the truth is, we are at the center of creation, Dave, and we are special, and we have powers beyond what they want us to know about it. One person's mind is powerful. Two people together is a hundred times more powerful. A whole group of people together is massive, right? You know, maybe these these pyramids and stuff were just built by people getting coming together and right. focusing, right? The energy of the mind is what creates this reality. And I believe that the elite, since they have sold their souls, don't have the ability, the ability to manifest things in this world. And so that's also why they're so after transhumanism. They right. don't believe the soul moves on. Right. They're so stuck in this three-dimensional, well, I guess, fuck. Well, okay, what if they're using us with mind control, because there's no question there's mind control, to right. create their world for them? Correct. Yeah, and I feel like God experiences his reality through us we're point we're nodes of consciousness that reflect back to god to Dave, experience did existence know, did we did we talk about seasons last time do you understand how seasons work oh uh i think we did but go ahead let me let me hit it so this is my my app you can see that does that show up yeah so so this is called the flat earth sun moon and zodiac clock app the sky is a perfect clock. Well, is that moving? There it goes. I got a, yeah, little, it is. a little delay. Um, the sun goes around once every 24 hours. So the sun is the hour hand. I have a little connection issue, but if it's a little jumpy. Um, so the sun, wherever the sun is, it's noon. Okay. And the sun yeah. laps the moon every 28 days. If I speed it up, is it jumpy? No, it's yeah. Jumpy. All right, it's so going the, the sun going will lap the moon every 28 days, but I'll, I'll just bring it back. So right now there's three lines, three circles on here. The inner circle is the Tropic of Cancer. The outer circle is the Tropic of Capricorn and the red line in the middle, which is hard to see is the equator. Well, the sun is in between, is inside of the equator right now. So if I move the date to um, July, the sun is over the Tropic of Cancer. And look, it's right over the lower United States. So they're having their summer, Miami, Mexico, right. you know, Southern California. It's hot. They're having winter in Australia because the sun is far away. But if I jump it forward six months, it goes out over the Tropic of Capricorn. And they're having their summer because it's over right. their head. And it's far right. away from us. Like if you look at the United States, it's going to come all the way out here. So the sun is lower in the sky because it's farther away. That's how seasons work. It's so, and so like Canada or um, Alaska, they would get, it would be, yeah, it's always like that. So, You're right. So the farther in north you are, the colder it is. This is like the height of winter because we're in uh, January here. But six months later, the sun will be over the Tropic of Cancer. And then it's close to us. Miami, super hot. Connecticut, pretty nice. You know, Canada, yeah, nice summer. It's not that long though. And here's the thing. In here is the Arctic, okay? So in the center is the Arctic. If I'm here, right? I'm going to turn the sun back on. What's the sun doing? It's arcing around me, yeah. right? It's arcing So when someone me. like... So when like my friend or the guy that I'm going to have on Saturday, he says he's going to debunk it. 
yeah. and say that he flew 48,000 feet or however high and it's dark and he saw the sphere of the planet. Let, What's let the me, purpose for it being dark and seeing the sphere if he did? I'll show, I'll show you that in one second. So, so here in the Arctic, the sun arcs around you, right? Here right. in the Antarctic, you can see my mouse, the sun is antarking away from me. Antarctica, Antarctic, Arctic. The sun arcs Arctic, around the Arctic yes. and it antarks away Ah, uh, right? uh, yeah. <clears throat> so, Dave, here's my recommendation for you. If get the app every day, there's a new video. What's it's, the name of the app again? It's called the Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. I'll give you a link. I'll give you. Yeah, that's long. I'll, I'll set it up, and it's by okay. it, it's by um Blue Water Bay. But every day there's a new featured video. I do short ones during the week, longer ones on the weekend. When you're having your breakfast, play that video every day for a couple of weeks and then you will you'll learn so much and the thing is if you have any questions you hit the question mark and up come all of the questions like hey you asked about eclipses you click eclipses and up comes a playlist of videos that google will hide from you they don't want you seeing these videos Interesting. Okay? yeah so that's uh that's the flat earth sun moon and zodiac clock am i am i freezing yeah, you're freezing up, but um, it's all right. I got to get going anyway. Dave, this has been so interesting, <laughs> as always. Um, Dave, where can people reach you? You can, uh, you can, you can hear me, okay? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, I, I can hear you. I can't uh, see you. I can yeah. See you. Um, I don't know what happened there. Let me, uh, let me just see, see if I can flip that real quick. And bam. Ah, that's a bummer. yeah. It's just that sucks. Um. All right, if you can hear me, the you can find me at the flatearthpodcast.com. That's where all my links are, the flatearthpodcast.com. And the app that I was just showing is the Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app by Blue Water Bay. Um, if you could see my image. The flatearthpodcast.com. The flatearthpodcast.com. All the links are there. Um, and just the app is the highest rated app in the app store. There are is a knockoff by the Flat Earth Society people uh, with the same name. Don't get that app. And then tell me my app sucks because it doesn't. My app is but, but basically people could just go to the flat earth podcast.com and get it all there. It's all there. And then my YouTube okay. channel is D I T R H the initials for deep inside the rabbit hole. D I D I T R H deep inside the rabbit hole. D I T R H. That's okay. my, my YouTube. And um, I, I, you got an email with all those links, by the way. You got it. And I'm going to put that up on here. Dave, thank you once again for coming on Nino's corner.tv. Thanks, Dave. <laughs>or go hands-free. The Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app with new added features. World time. See what time it is all around the flat earth. A true earth compass that shows true navigation across and around the flat earth plane. Weather. Tap for detailed local weather information. Know what phase and where the moon is at all times. Watch the sun travel between the tropics for the seasons. Select an amazing background. Add your own or have the app change it to a new one automatically every time you use the app. Add a countdown to your next big date. Learn the truth about our world with the featured video of the day. Web button for additional Flat Earth related features from the mythical curve calculator all the way to Tartaria. While talking to friends, easily pull up pictures that expose the globe lie and shine light on the Flat Earth truth. Video playlists in different languages. See the real trade winds circling the flat earth. And clean screen features. Simply click off the items you don't wish to see. The Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app is the best tool to show your friends and strangers how our flat earth actually works.